right, so Ivana and I enjoyed our trip to Shanghai so much that we've decided to continue our China series right here in Hong Kong. I think in a few days we'll go over to Macau, at least for a short while, and then hopefully we'll get another 144 hour six day visa and see another Chinese city for the first time because honestly, the feeling of traveling China is unmatched. So to be clear, Ivana and I have been traveling full time for five years and there is that same feeling in every country you go to when it's the first time you're there and you're sort of hopefully uh, anticipating with some excitement to see a new adventure for the first time. But that feeling in China is like that times 10. It seems to be the most exciting place. It's almost thrilling being there and I think it's because it seems like China is a country that everybody has an opinion on. Uh, we've met some people who really think China is the best country in the world. We've also met people who think that Ivana and I should not even be going to China, like it's morally wrong to even visit the place or something. And so it's hard to know what is exactly true in terms of all of the rumors and all of the things you hear about China because it's a little bit mysterious. I'd have to say some of the rumors are probably true because for example, right now on the Canadian government website, there is a travel advisory to any Canadian tourist who is going to China. And I wouldn't think they would put that there for no reason, but I think a lot of the things we hear about China are exaggerated. For example, in the comment section, a lot of people were amazed that Ivana and I were able to walk the streets of China without a government employee with us 24-7. They compared China to something like North Korea where the only way to see it is a propaganda tour, which is simply not true. We've even had some comments, people were impressed that Chinese people were allowed to celebrate Christmas in public. So certainly the truth is uh, somewhere in between these two extremes. And with that in mind, Ivana and I wanted to go to China to see for ourselves. I will admit when the plane landed in Shanghai and we were going through customs, I was really excited and I was also nervous about how I could be able to make these YouTube videos. I was concerned that I'm gonna be filming in the street as a foreigner and maybe I was gonna get detained or something and all of a sudden, you know, very quickly, the biggest mistake in my life is the fact that I chose to go to China and try to make a YouTube video. And so I'm happy to report that Ivana and I behaved in Shanghai in the same way that we behaved in every country we've ever been to. We walked down the streets with our cameras, we filmed the buildings and the tourist attractions. There were lots of people in the footage that we captured. We even went underground into the metro filming the whole time, showing the security and the trains and everything. We even filmed some of the police officers because they're all around the city and we were commenting that it's very safe. Uh, we walked right in the front door of restaurants, cameras rolling, ate some food, had a beer, enjoyed our day, and did the same thing the next day, six days in a row. So we kind of discovered that the tourist experience in Shanghai was more familiar to us than maybe we expected. And in fact, there was a lot to be impressed about in Shanghai. So for one, and most obviously, uh, Shanghai is like a perfectly clean city. It feels like you're in a city that is also a showcase or a showroom, or it's like China is presenting the city to the world as, look what a city could be like if there was no graffiti and no vandalism and no litter and no broken sidewalks. And that goes for both above ground in the city as well as underground in the truly world-class metro so it really is an impressive place with so many electric vehicles that keep the city very quiet and the air very clean it's like impressive but to be clear Ivana and I have seen cities like that before so it's not too dissimilar from Singapore and what really stood out to us what we really were impressed with is the people of Shanghai were so friendly to us so we were a bit nervous because there's obvious tension between these two governments you know the West and the Chinese government and so I was a bit nervous that maybe the people of Shanghai would not love the fact that I was there. Maybe they saw me as this sort of Western capitalist or something and they were going to be negative to me, especially if I walked in their restaurant with the camera rolling. I thought maybe I might get some bad responses and I was a bit nervous of how the people might react to me. But I'm glad to say that we were overwhelmed with the kindness of the local people. Obviously there was a communication barrier because Ivana and I do not speak Chinese, but we managed to get around and make lots of friends and have lots of laughs and people saw that we were filming and were happy with it. We even had a few occurrences where we were trying to order something, but we were kind of struggling because we can't speak Chinese 
and somebody who's walking past on the street who happened to speak English, like a local person who speaks the language, would overhear us, kind of swoop in like a superhero, translate for us, sort of save the day, and then we say, thank you so much, and they say, no problem, and be gone. And so we were really impressed with the uh, hospitality of the Chinese people. I think most people in the world kind of get the message. There's like the government, and then there's the people. And so uh, in China, they were more than hospitable to us, uh, which was a good feeling. Now, that isn't to say everything about our Shanghai trip went perfectly. I will talk about two things for this next segment. One of them was actually frustrating for me, and one of them I didn't mind, but man, the YouTube comments went off. So first things first, and you've probably heard this before, uh, the internet in China is totally different. Obviously, you can't use Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. We knew that, and we don't do much on Facebook or Instagram, and so we were okay with that. We kind of expected that but I didn't realize how much I depended on Google. Not being allowed to use Google uh, was more difficult than I thought. To be clear, there is a Chinese version of all of the services Google provides. So there's a Chinese search engine, there's a Chinese map, there's a Chinese translator service, but honestly, every time I go to the internet on my phone, I immediately go to Google. It's like how I access the internet. So I had to find this purple icon on my phone, which I've literally never clicked on in my life. Uh, I had to use that and then go to Bing to search. It was a little bit frustrating. And one thing I didn't expect was also Wikipedia is blocked in China. So typically when Ivana and I are making a video, we go to the place, we get some images or some footage, and then we go to Wikipedia, get some information and try to build a storyline. Uh, not being able to use Wikipedia was more frustrating than I had thought. Also no Netflix for our hotel room. Uh, obviously, we knew this going into China, but after 40 or 50 countries we've been to, it's the first time we had to struggle and sort of relearn how to use the internet. Now, for the second thing here, uh, to be clear, this didn't really bother me. I'm a tourist and I'm more than okay, but the comments were very aggressive. So, it is a fact that as you walk down the street in Shanghai, you will see lots and lots of cameras. To be clear, my intention with traveling and what I like about it is to see the way other people live their lives, to see the way other people build their cities. I've said this before, but if you have the money to travel and you don't do it, it's a bit like having a spaceship and not wanting to see the stars. Because this is the greatest sort of source of adventure and source of travel we have, is going to different countries and seeing the way they live. It's such a joy to be a fly on the wall in a different country. And so in Shanghai, they do this thing with very a lot of cameras. It's no problem to me. To that point, when Yvonne and I went to the Chinese basketball game, which was a good experience, we saw the Shanghai Sharks play, uh, in order to get into the game, we had to take off our hat, take off our glasses, and they scanned our face, and we entered the stadium with our biometric data. So for me, it's no big deal. I was happy to enter the game that way. Uh, but once I mentioned the cameras, the comments got very aggressive. Um, a big army of people thought the cameras were so terrible and bad, and another army of people thought the cameras were great. And it was a bit of a confrontation in the uh, comments. We did learn that um, in terms of per capita cameras, so you could say the most surveillance on any city in the world, based on amount of cameras in the streets per person, it is in fact London as the most heavily surveilled city. So I think this example kind of sums up our China trip. It's like we have this idea in our head that it's so scary, but when you learn more about it, it's not that unique what's happening in Shanghai, but it's even happening more so in London. And actually as a tourist, it didn't hurt my experience at all. Uh, I didn't mind that they were filming everything. I felt very safe and that's their style of building their country. I said, go ahead. So for me, that was an interesting point at least. Now, I wanted to mention one more thing before I do the conclusion here, because I was really genuinely very impressed with the value of things in Shanghai. And when I say value, I mean the cost of them versus the quality of what you get. So for example, the area we stayed was right near People's Square Metro. There's this huge, really, really beautiful road to walk down. At the end of the road is the iconic view called the Bund, which at nighttime is really something to behold. And so we wanted to stay in this area. It's more or less right in the city center of Shanghai. Our accommodation cost $60 per night, which to be clear, simple room with a bathroom in the front, private bathroom, and then a simple room with a bed and a window. 
but it really had all we needed because on the main floor there's a huge shared area where we could plug in our laptop and do our work so for sixty dollars in that location uh i thought it was a very good value not to mention the metro is unbelievably robust with like 400 stations and some of the stations have four or five transfers so the tunnels are very deep and very big and you can imagine how expensive it was to build this so to get on the metro depending on how far you go it's like a dollar which was amazing to me really good value there and for food to be clear we didn't go to any like five star or michelin star restaurants but it was typically 30 yuan or maybe 50 yuan somewhere in that range per plate, which is like five to seven American dollars. Good food, uh, definitely different than what we're used to in Canada in terms of Canadian Chinese food. But the value for the food I thought was really, uh, really quite good overall. And so in conclusion, uh, Ivana and I sort of learned over our years of travel that typically the rumors you hear are exaggerated. For example, Ivana and I, like three years ago, went to Pakistan. And a lot of people were very concerned about are you gonna get blown up by a terrorist? And as it turns out, we really loved the Pakistan trip. It was eye-opening, it was great. The people were so kind. And aside from some outrageously explosive diarrhea, the trip was perfect. We really loved uh, the Pakistan trip. And it was a similar experience in Brazil. We told our friends, told our YouTube audience we're going to Brazil and people were concerned about the cartel and maybe you'll get shot. And for me at least, Brazil is probably the best country in the world for travel. It's something for everyone, it's huge, and it's got so much to offer. So, are there cartel in Brazil? Yes. Are there terrorists in Pakistan? Yes. But as a tourist, you're not going to come across them on a two-week trip in the same way that, uh, are there, is there some truth to the rumors you hear about China? Probably so. But as a tourist there, it's fun, and it's, it's really great, and I would really recommend it. If you like travel for that sort of feeling of adventure, I mean, for me, China is among the very top because it is sort of mysterious and not very traveled by the western person so you really feel like you're on an adventure and doing something unforgettable and it's almost thrilling being there so with that in mind you guys can let us know in the comments what city you'd like to see us go to next we had a lot of good reviews about harpin because of the ice festival unfortunately this is not covered by the 144 hour visa so maybe we'll do Beijing, but also we're thinking of a place I'm going to pronounce incorrectly, Xiamen, which is in Fujian province, which technically Ivana's ancestors are from Fujian. So maybe we'll do that. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see. We'll probably do about two weeks here in Hong Kong, and then maybe a little bit of time in Macau. Sort of nice here in Hong Kong because the visa situation is more relaxed, so we can slow down here and catch our breath and figure out what our next six days will be in China. And honestly, I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's exciting and fun. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. If you're thinking about traveling China, but you're nervous, uh, probably your nerves are based on some exaggerated claims. There you have it guys, later.